Hey everyone, I had a couple people asking for an update on my flight bag and you know, it's not really needed, not a lot of changes, but I get it because I love looking at these videos too, people's updates on their bags. Uh, one of the users on YouTube, my fire videos, I forget his actual name, I just remember his username has done these a lot and it's just kind of cool to see how his bag changes over time. But you know, once a, one of these bags is broken in, there's not just a ton of changes year to year or whatever, but I did my first video about two years ago showing where, how my bag is looking. Now this should be about four years in. Um, I'll get the exact date and put that in the, in the title and description or whatever, but about four years in of having this, this bag, a little more than that probably. And I thought I'd just show you some some changes to it, a little bit of an update. And some things I've noticed, how I use the bag. It's changed maybe just a smidge. But anyway, let's do it. So as you can tell, uh, lots of patina still. Um, I still have not conditioned to this bag. For some people that's you know taboo, that's not something you wanna say or <laughs> wanna treat it that way. So don't mind my dog in the background. But I have not conditioned it. I'm just starting to see a need for it in a few few places. So if you see that, just know I've seen it too. I'm not anti-conditioned forever. I just would rather it be clear that it needs it. So lots of patina on the front here. Um, and especially on this pocket more for some reason. And this started curling up recently and I don't hate it, honestly. It just happened on its own. I'm not trying to make it do that. I don't know how that happened, but um maybe if i condition it a bit it might relax a little but just doing it on its own and i don't hate it i'm just letting it do its thing i carry it both ways so that um both sides of the bag rub against my hip when i'm carrying it so both sides get patina but i guess the way i carry it kind of gets this side a little more so anyway you'll notice that um let me turn it Here's one side, I'm seeing some of the dryness, uh, that most of the dryness I'm seeing is happening in places that I don't really touch, which kind of makes sense. It's not getting any oil from my hands. Um, it's just getting dry, so the gussets here, I feel like getting a little dry in some spots. Um, this is still wearing quite well. Um, not, I mean, it's tearing up this, this a little bit, but not horribly. And not seeing any problems with the rivets. A Little bit of stitching stuff there, but I'm just gonna Take a lighter to that to shrivel that up a little bit but nothing significant um on this side really they've changed the rivets a bit on some of the newer flight bags i've seen but mine have been acting totally fine i've not had any problems um this little hinge part here now they have the silver rivets now the chicago screws maybe it is what it is or something but this whatever the way they did this one in the first run white bags it's working fine for me i've had no problems as of yet here's the back where it's like patina city um we've got real nice you know patina darkening there um and i really don't use this back pocket for much so um it's kind of even patina for the most part back here it's really nice to have it. I don't know why I don't use it. I think it's easy to throw things in a little pocket on the inside of the bag, but I think I've occasionally used it for like a plane ticket or so, but um, you can kind of see what the color was originally in there, but holding up well. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. <sighs> Got all loaded up, so it's kind of hard to move with one hand and hold the camera, but here we go, other side. Where I've been seeing some little bit of dryness there. Um, otherwise looking good. The thing I pointed out in my other video is still true that the parts where the, you know, it's kind of offset where the strap is attached to the bag here have, have really worn and kind of made this, this seam here kind of wrinkle and turn upward. Uh, it doesn't bother me. A lot I've seen it on other people's flight bags since I talked about it with you guys, but just something to note maybe. Oh, 
Just a little. Got a friend here. What are the chances of that? Okay, but I don't want to scare you. There we go. All right. And uh, same thing here. It's only happening where these come up. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it kind of helps it stay out of the way some, but I don't know. Um, I never actually latch this. I just did to start the video, but I never feel the need to buckle this enclosure here. I literally just leave that back that way. When I carry it for a little while, I just throw it over like this, but I don't actually buckle it. It stays closed for me, especially when you're holding it. Um, I know David did this on purpose, but when the straps are offset like this, it's going to keep it closed. One's pulling up the back side, one pulling up the front side, so the hinge is not going to want to fall open so bad. So that's smart. I'm glad he did that. Um, I did this pretty much as tight as I possibly could because I carry it high on one shoulder instead of going crossbody. And so if you're a somewhat smaller dude like me, you can lace the strap back through, fold it over, and then come back through. And then I put it, put the little, what do you call it? Little pin thing through the slack and through the actual strap there. So it stays put, which I really like. Don't have a long dangling strap thing. Um, Start with these outside pockets. I use them similarly to how I did back in the first video. Put charger, um, USB hub, Altoids in here. These are things I grab quickly all the time. So I don't want them on kind of easy to get to. And I don't put things in the back side, back pocket back here very often. Business cards and stuff occasionally, still. Um, but not much. In fact, stuff back here is probably kind of old. And then the other pocket, I put these, I've got some lightning cables for my phone. And I have two canvas bags of, of cables and chargers and stuff um, that I can pull out, unzip, check out what's in there and then put them back in. That's been the best solution I've been able to find for really using these pockets well. And uh, been becoming a tangled mess of cables, you know? Okay, inside, the um, biggest change I've made probably is just that I now use a 14 inch MacBook, one of the newer ones. Sorry about the wind and the um, train sound, but fits in this the pigskin pocket roll nicely here and then I just use a cheap plastic folder still to put most of my papers in because it slides in and out easily and lots of times I have more papers than I need and I can go through that and thin it down and then this pocket suddenly feels like way more way more space in it um, I keep a mouse pad with me and um, there we go I just took a few more papers and stuff but that pocket works great. I always put my laptop in it. I love having a little pocket for that. And the off chance I don't use, don't need to take my laptop with me somewhere. I like that it just, you know, can go up against and kind of get out of the way. Keep a coffee thermos with me most of the time. A water bottle with me most of the time. Got my um, Kindle here. And then my small notepad holder. And I keep an iPad mini in the side there. And um, that's kind of it. I don't really have a lot else to say. Um, it's wearing really well. Loving the bag still. I feel like it's the perfect bag for me, for my daily use. I don't commute to a job anymore uh, like I used to. I work nearby. So it does get a little less like I'm not having to pack up as much and feel like I'm you know, going 30 miles away for the day, every day of the week. But I still use it daily, pretty much. Um, and it's looking great. One thing I've noticed, I load mine up quite a bit, and so I've noticed that mine just looks bigger than some people's light bags, because I think they keep theirs a little bit more like slim or whatever. And so when they don't keep as much in it, it doesn't kind of stick out as much. I always feel like my light bag looks bigger than some people's, but it's really not, I'm sure. Um, and 
they really have some good depth to it, but I like that when I don't carry as much, it really does kind of flatten down. So if I take the, um, let's take the notepad holder out. Put these things to the side here. Pretend I'm taking almost nothing with me. You'll see how it really can kind of collapse down pretty well. Just folds in there. And suddenly you've got a thin, thin briefcase with you. I know some people kind of like will join these things together to keep it in some way like time together or something to keep it thin whenever they don't have much in there. But um, I've noticed when I've, it's gotten broken in enough when I have some things taken out of it and I throw it in the corner or whatever, it'll kind of collapse on itself like that, which I really like. Um, it not having a divider that's sewn in really helps with that. You can totally relax the gusset and totally fold over on itself. And so I love that about it. Um, I love the bag. Can't say enough about that. I've I've been pretty evangelistic about this bag. I've got since I did my last video, I got my brother and a friend of mine to both buy one, and I sent them my video. <laughs> and uh, I could have just told them all stuff in person, but um, made it a little bit easier on me. And I love it. Love this bag. So if you're someone who has a similar amount to carry that I do. Um, I think it'd be a great choice for you if you're looking at saddleback stuff. I love the Gladstone opening. Still have seen no problems, no problems with the wear. Uh, it has not started falling open on me or anything like that. It's worked great for me. And I love being able to occasionally I'll, I mean, often I'll need to open it while I'm holding it, while it's on my shoulder and it works. That's obviously one of the biggest benefits of this kind of opening. There's no flap you have to get out of the way to get in there. Occasionally, I'll be like walking a quick, you know, walk between offices or something like that, and I'll just leave it open and carry it on my shoulder with the with it open, so I can easily put something in or take something out or whatever. So um, it works really well. This is about four years of almost daily use. I would say about five days a week, maybe four sometimes of use, and still working great. And Love it that much more than I did last time. I did a video, so um, highly recommend you picking one of these up. If you end up seeing a used one somewhere, I think uh, mine should be a testament to the fact that they're going to hold up great. So don't be worried about buying a used one. If you see one, um, you get to see a good deal on it, go for it. And that's what my brother did. Or just go and pick up a new one. I think you'll be glad. If I spread out the cost of this bag across the four years I've owned it. I think it was around 500 when they first introduced it, maybe 480, something like that, um, when they first entered, did the introductory price. Spread that out across four years, using it every day. Um, that cost starts to get pretty doable pretty fast. So um, even if you just did a monthly cost, for instance, something like that, it's like 480, 500 divided by four, divided by 12. <laughs> That gets very manageable, and then you can kind of see why these kind of bags are worth it. So anyway, that's my take. Enjoy the update if you needed it, and if you didn't, then um, then sorry. <laughs> see you guys in another year or two, and I'll let you know how it's going.